of their life will be crushed out of them. The spirit of the joy of life will be crushed out of them and they'll just be cannon fodder for the profit making system. Now just think of the difference that socialism would mean. It would mean you have a situation where everyone has a job, everyone has a decent home, everyone has a decent wage. Okay, and, and, and the working week is cut from 20 hours, from 30 hours rather, to, tw to, thir to, to 25 hours, to 20 hours, even less in the future. What does it mean? It means that for the first time in history, the mass of people will have what the ruling class always had. That is to say, free time. That's the most precious of commodities, free, free time. Where your problems are solved, your free time to develop yourself freely as a human being to develop your mind to develop your cultural interest to develop your body to develop relations between people to develop relations between the sexes which is, which is not in a good state at, at, uh, under this society in other words men and women for the first time will become free to develop whatever potential they have it's not to say we're all different oh you want to be Everyone must be the same under communist nonsense. How can everyone be the same? We're all different. That's the beauty of, of the human race, that we are all different. We have different temperaments, different characters, different interests, of course. Yes, but under socialism, you'd be free to develop whatever you have inside you, whatever that may be. It will not be the same. But there'd be plenty of scope. To, in other words, and here's another develop, uh, definition of socialism, Socialism is to make actual, to make real, what the human race always has been potentially. To make actual that which, which was always potential. That's the purpose of it. In other words, socialism is genuine freedom. You'd have not one Einstein, not one uh, Goya, not one Picasso. You'd have... Uh, Hundreds of thousands of great artists, scientists, you have a flourishing of culture, of discussion, of architecture, which is a very very neglected art, art under, under capitalism. One final question. People say, well, won't we all be bored? It will be very boring and, and the sources. Because, I mean, that is a very strange question. That question... Uh, will we, because there's no wars and we're not killing each other we're not sticking knives in each other we're not struggling for a loaf of bread are we, we going to be bored I mean, what a, what a poverty stricken conception what a, a miserable conception of human nature and if the question is well there'll be no more challenges because all our needs will be satisfied I say no on the contrary real life begins it only begins when, you, when your necessities are, are satisfied Aristotle said that a long time ago. He said, men begin to philosophize when the needs of life are provided. He said this. And he said, consequently, mathematics was discovered in Egypt because the priest did not have to work. It's only when, you, when your necessities are satisfied. You don't have to worry. Will I have a job tomorrow or not? Will I have a house? Will I be able to pay the rent? Will I have mo enough money? for?" These are humiliating things. These are not worthy of human beings. They drag people down. They dehumanize people. They brutalize people. Once you so once all those questions are solved, people can think about the important things. People can begin to, to, to lift their eyes to the stars, and that's the point. There is one great horizon which still remains, one big challenge before us, and it's an important challenge, and that is the conquest of space. We're on the point of conquering the planet, although they've made a mess of the planet, we'll have a lot of clearing up to do clean the air, clean the water clean the sea, save whatever species can be saved for the future save what culture can be saved for the future but the next great challenge is, is the conquest of space, capitalism and Stalinism Russia also posed the question they showed, they give, uh, give us a little glimpse of what will be possible yes, but once the whole resources of the world are united, just imagine that the vast resources of Brazil, of China, of Russia, of India, all of those united on the basis of, of world socialism, then you'd be in the position, they can't do this now. The space program is, is, is stuck. It's not, they're not developing it, except for military purposes, for destructive purposes. 
we will be able to solve this problem. So just one final word. What would happen, Liam, to you under socialism? Well, look, uh, you leave school at, uh, at uh, whenever, about 20. How old are you now? 23. Yeah, you'll just be about leaving school at 23. You go to university then for a few years to improve your mind, to learn Japanese, Chinese, uh, a few other languages. And then you'd work for about a couple of years in different places. You know, you wouldn't wouldn't be need need to, to work for long because there'd be enough for production. And then, when you were about uh, forty-five or, or less, you'd be thinking about retiring to develop yourself and so on. You know, and of course, there's the question of space travel. You'd be going on holidays to Mars. But above all, this is an important question because eventually, this planet, this beautiful world of ours, is not going to be habitable. Well, we've got a few billion years to, to, to worry about this. It's not an immediate prospect, but eventually the sun is going to expand. It's going to get very hot. We won't, 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 won't want to live here. And therefore, the conquest of space is important even for, the, for our own survival. That's the next great horizon, and that's an exciting thing to me to think about. So the future generations have got a marvellous future in front of them, only on one condition that we fulfill our historical duty, that we overthrow this rotten capitalist system which is destroying the world, it's destroying humanity, destroying the planet, and carry out this marvellous transformation which, and I will finish on this ex marvellous expression of Engels, Frederick Engels, Marx's uh, lifelong comrade and companion, he said this is mankind's leap from the kingdom of necessity